Howdy folks, today's video I'm going to show you how to replace your mouse feet. Now this all came about because this Impow Dragon Slayer mouse that I got from my nephew a while back ago unfortunately he spilled some of my juice or something sticking in here so the right mouse button no longer click it became basically glued down so the trick around there was basically I took isopropyl alcohol 90% used a q-tip let it soak in there but also right here at the very tip there, you can see there's a line, use a screwdriver, pried it open, couldn't get it all the way because I can't get the other side, and I didn't want to break it off because this plastic looks very delicate. So I basically just, again, poured some alcohol in there, and now it's freed and cleared up. You can hear the nice clickiness again. The only problem, though, is that in order to get this mouse apart, and this pretty much goes for the majority of the mice out there, is that you're going to have to remove, and in the process, destroy the mouse feet because the screws are hiding down there. So... I ordered this set here, 759. It came from this vendor called Lu Shang Bluetooth or something like that on Amazon, and it arrived pretty fast. So it's not too big. I mean, but it's good enough for my purposes. Now, the next thing is that in order to get the new one on, you're obviously this is a DIY. They do sell pre-cut ones, but not for this particular mice. I think they cover the popular ones like Logitech G502, the Razer Death Adder, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this one, you know, again, generic mouse. So the tip here is that. Take this, put each mouse pad as cleanly back on as you can so that it fits back over the original spot as precisely as possible. Next thing you want to do is take this, dump it on top of a photocopy machine. So you're going to basically have your mouse pads there, cut it out, use that as your template, tape it to the top of these new mouse feet, and then that way you could get a much more precise cut. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I've got the three mouse feet cut out as you can see there. Now there's a reason why I'm doing this. You may have thought like, well, why couldn't you just have taken off the existing mouse feet and then cut it up from there? But as you can see, in the process of removing it, it gets very badly deformed. Plus, not to mention when you stick it on here, it's extremely difficult to see black on black. So the trick around that is, again, I photocopied it. I use scrap paper, doesn't matter, whatever. But I flipped it upside down because on the original photocopy, and here's an extra one, you'll see that it's still very dark. So if you took that and you taped it on top of here, you run into the same issue where it's very difficult to see. So the trick around that is to flip it upside down and tape it to the bottom of the, your new mouse feet. You gotta figure out what's the way that you can minimize use of it because you could save the rest for another project. And right now, this was the best that I could do. Not very good at Tetris, but I think that's probably one of the more, more efficient. Then you're going to get clear scotch tape and tape this down firmly. So you can use it as a template to cut your new mouse feet out. So as you can see here, I've got the pieces all taped down nice and flat now. Don't worry about the excessive tape because you got to remember, once you cut it out, this is the bottom, you're just going to peel it off. So no concerns there. So now you're going to go ahead and cut into these pieces. Again, just being mindful to save as much of the rest. So you can save the rest for a future mouse feet replacement. All right, so here you can see I've got the pieces cut out. Now, in terms of the quality, I guess... Because it is slightly thicker than paper and it's a little plasticky type of uh, material, you won't get some jaggedy edges. So that you got to kind of be careful of because you got to remember any imperfection here will translate to drag once the mouse is on a surface. So I might get into that in a second. But the next thing you want to do is obviously put back the screws to reassemble your mouse and make sure you clean every little bit of residue that's here. Because again, you don't want to add to any surface imperfections due to extra crud down here. Now, I would suggest probably isopropyl alcohol again. So now I got most of the crud cleaned off. Next thing is to test fit to see whether or not you need to make some additional trimming adjustments. And as you can see, I didn't cut this perfectly, but that's fine. As long as you get close enough, there should be enough material to support the mouse to stabilize it. So I'm going to have to do some trimming on all three pieces, actually. Now, of one note is that this particular pad that I got is reasonably thick. The original one was actually, I wouldn't say paper thin, but definitely thinner than this. So it may actually create an imbalance now because you have three pads down here that are slightly thicker than those two. I may have to eventually re replace those two as well, but I'm not going to go crazy at this time. That's just a note for you in case you run into that situation. So now I've got all three pieces trimmed up. Again, they don't have to be perfect. They won't unless you're a precision cutter. I use the scissor. Probably a better way would be to use an X-Acto knife, but that takes too much time. I'm sorry, I don't have the patience for that. But it, if you do, by all means, I think that will allow you a more precise cut. The only thing that you have to be mindful of is that the new mouse feet does not ride over the ridge that you're going to put it within. Just make sure that everything, the entirety, is within the ridge so it doesn't stick out. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing and get this taped on. So I've got all three taped on now and as I had mentioned this is reasonably thick compared to the original OEM as you can see there that's super thin. That only sits right above the ridge but this one protrudes out a bit more. So I would take the mouse, press it down on a hard surface and make sure that it's perfectly flat. Then the last thing you want to do is actually remove the coating that's on top of the skate itself. There's like a thin protective layer on here. For each, get that all done for all three. Again, this is my first time doing it. Use scissors, so not the greatest. But if I were to do this over again, one tip is definitely, you don't want to leave any sharp edges, right? You want to try to round everything off a little bit. Reason being that if you use it on a, a cloth mat like mine, it will catch a little bit. It will feel a little like a file for now. So before using it back on your mouse pad, I would take it just suggest you run it over like a hard surface that you won't worry about scuffing up, but that also will not damage the mouse feet. Reason being that all these edges, you want to kind of like file it down, and that should definitely smoothen it out. In the end, was it worth it? I don't know. I mean, this mouse was a cheap mouse. This is a generic 16 bucks on Amazon. These two layers alone cost about $7.59. Unless you really have a favorite mouse that you can't replace. I mean, think about it. these two pads were half the price, but of course with this, I estimate I could probably fix four or five more mice with this, but then the issue again lies in that do you get the same original feel of the original pads? I'll report back over time to see how this mouse responds after I smooth it out a little bit. But again, this is just a generic mouse, right? The preferred one would obviously be if you get the pre-cut ones, because those are probably like laser cut or factory cut, however they do it. Those should be nice and smooth and shouldn't cause you the same issue that you would run into with a DIY. And perhaps next time I would use an X-Acto blade or something like that and cut it from the top down so that you etch it down and you kind of form the plastic downwards. Whereas this, like I said, beating a dead horse here, use the scissor. But in the end, it's fixed. So as part of FTC disclosure, these mouse pads were purchased off Amazon.com. I have no affiliation with the company. Thanks again for watching.